This is the night. It's a beautiful night to learn about Lady and everyone who worked to bring Lady to life. Lady is a sweet, innocent, and naive Cocker Spaniel who has an air of sophistication and curiosity. Today, we will learn about her voice artist. Who could this prolific actress be? Let's find out. Before we start, don't forget to check out our Patreon, our Discord, and of course, like and subscribe. Barbara Luddy was born in Great Falls, Montana in 1908. Or as the haters call it, Just All Right Falls, Montana. I wrote that one myself. Thank you. She began singing at age six, and at age eight, she began singing with Red Cross Productions. Eventually, her family moved to California, where she began touring. And if you're a fan of this show, you know where I'm gonna say. Vaudeville. She was touring when her parents became ill. It's okay, they got better. When Barbara's voice changed, she was switched to non-singing roles, and a new career was opened up for her. At 16, she began acting as an extra in movies. Her first credited role was in An Enemy of Men in 1925, followed by Sealed Lips and Rose of the World. In 1926, she signed with Fox and starred in nine shorts, including East Side, West Side, Lion Tamer, Honeymoon Hospital, and The Bathing Suitor. All right, Sal, roll the clip. Hmm? What? What's that? Well, I'm being told that none of these films exist on the internet. After a year and a half with the studio's stock company, they decided to drop her contract. She continued to act in a number of films from various studios. In 1929, Luddy toured with Leo Carrillo in Australia as part of a touring company that presented the play Lombardi Limited. A review in the Sydney Morning Herald cites Luddy's work portraying a mannequin as a role in which Miss Barbara Luddy made a great hit by her pure audacity and vivaciousness. So, by 21, Barbara had conquered stage and screen. Next, she would tackle a new medium. My first job in radio was when I came back from Australia. I'd been over there a year in Australia and New Zealand with Leo Carrillo. And oh, long, what were you doing in the, on the stage? I, oh, I uh -huh. was in the theater, yes, uh -huh. long before I was in uh, theater and pictures long before I was in radio. Uh -huh. I came back in 1930, and... Uh, we opened in San Francisco in The Bad Man, and the second week, instead of our salary, we got a notice of bankruptcy on the board. Mm. <laughs> that was when uh, all the theaters all over the country were closing. And so I came back down here, this was, had been my home, and uh, I, uh, Gail Gordon and I, he, he, was, he was beginning to be interested in radio. I'd been away for a year, and I didn't know anything about radio, actually, except before I'd left, I'd heard a couple of crystal sets. But as for, <laughs> as for, uh, as for uh, 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 dramatic radio, I knew nothing about it. And this one man, Carmen, I've forgotten his last name, his first name was Carmen. Oh, no, Gene Carmen, that was it. Uh, wrote a series that uh, was based on a young couple at the breakfast table thing. And we did that at 7 o'clock in the morning for six months on the Bill Sharples show on, on KNX for free just to break into radio, which we did. From there, they started working with Kay Van Ripper, who later would work for MGM, writing Andy Hardy shorts. Uh, after, after I started working with Kay, we got the, the, the regular fee was $5. And Kay would get $150. Barker Brothers was their sponsor, a big furniture company out here. And they sponsored it. And uh, they would only pay us $5, but Kay got $150 a week for writing, directing, and starring in it. And she paid us each another $5. She out, did? Out of her own. Out of her. Own, her so own you got $10. So we got $10. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And if anybody made the slightest error, the whole blame thing had to be done over. I remember... Uh, one one night we were doing a, a series for John Hancock Oil. Gail Gordon was the villain. True Boardman was the hero, and I was the heroine. So there, and <laughs> we we recorded all night long. We'd we'd start at ten o'clock at night, and do the five shows for the week. And we got to the very last. We had numerous little things would go wrong, and we then we'd have they'd just have to shave the the. The, the wax? Wax. Uh -huh. Master. And st master and start all over again. And we got finally to the very last 
we we had four in in the can, and we were up to the last line of the mm. of the sixth of the fifth one. And Gail Gordon, as the as the heavy, was supposed to say, "I'll get you yet." Don Hancock, that was True's name. And he said, Dan, whole cake. <laughs> Everybody just, nobody was angry. Everybody was just too tired to be mad. We just collapsed all over the place. But we were there at 8 o'clock from 10 o'clock the night before. In 1936, Barbara got an audition for a show that would end up being her big break. First night I auditioned every ingenue in town to do second business for the six weeks they were going to be here. Betty Lou Gerson was mm-hmm. the leading lady. And... Uh, I, I got it, and I, I did second business with him for six weeks. And then uh, Betty Lou went back to Chicago the, for, the, for the summer hiatus, and she got off the train and married Joe Ainley the very day that she got back there. So since she had just gotten married when, the, when they went back on the air in September, she didn't want to come out here and leave him. And so th- they got me, and so I did it with Donna Meacher for nine months. And then... Uh, we went back to Chicago, and who turned out to be our director but Joe Ainley, <laughs> the man she'd given up the show for. <laughs> That's all right. And uh, 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 Trem- uh, Les Tremaine and I did it for about six years, mm-hmm. and then Olin and I did it for about 11. The first Nighter program took place in, and I quote, the little theater off Times Square. Every week they would present a complete and separate original play. I'd feel a lot better if you'd come along to the want to pay. No, Dad, I'm going back to the States. As soon as your train leaves, I'm going back to hotel and pack. And for Pete's sake, change your clothes. Oh, stop fussing about these shorts. At least they're cool. You shouldn't wear shorts down here. These people don't understand the way they look at you. Oh, get on, Daddy. Oh, wait, your carton of gazooza. Oh, yes, 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 thanks. I must have that. And nobody will tell me who makes it. Daddy, your train's moving. Goodbye, Emily. Be a good girl. Goodbye, Dad. Senorita. Huh? Two. One minute. I command you to stop. Halt. What? You, do you mean me? You. Come with me, pronto. But, uh, wait a minute. Let, let go of my arm. Let go. Help, please. Did you call me? No, not you. You let go of me. I want a policeman. Me? I am the police. You? Yes. Well, what are you trying to do? The respectful citizens of Cholula demand I arrest you for running around in the street in your underwear. Underwear? You, you, you mean these shorts? Don't, don't be silly. Oh, let go of me. Uh, well, it went from, from farce through comedy to uh, uh, a, a fairly serious love stuff. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah. I love stuff. <laughs> and, uh, Very and, good. And occasionally a, a mystery. They uh-huh. tried to vary them each month. There was never a mention of drinking. None of the ladies ever smoked. No. And w- once we said darn in a script, and we got so much mail you wouldn't believe. Really? From people uh-huh. saying, when you say darn, you mean damn, and that's just like swearing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Our, our scripts were submitted by any and all writers. Uh-huh. And then we'd. One have, copy, a copy. One copy we'd have. And we had a reading each week to select which ones we would use. And I'm I'm not quite 4'11", so I'd be right there in front by the one script. A copy on the music stand. And everybody <laughs> had to read over my shoulders. And they were usually fairly early in the morning, I mean around 10 or so. And they, I don't think they had <laughs> things like certs and so forth then. <laughs> <laughs> I, you used to get pretty heavy sometimes. <laughs> But that's how they would audition. They would someone would listen to it and say, "Well, that sounds good." Right? Yeah, we'd Rather read, we'd read uh, five or six shows at uh-huh. a time, and uh, the committee would be in the control room there listening. Joey Lee, our director, and Bill Krull, the president of the company, Rich and Krull. And this is what was her name? I was going to ask you, uh, uh, a dear uh, lady, very uh, nice lady who was a, a big wheel in the company. Uh-huh. She would always be there, and so would dear Tom Wallace, who was our producer. Oh yeah, from the agency. From the agency. Mm-hmm. By 1944, she was referred to as, and this was meant with sincerity, the most married actress in radio, as she had been married over 200 times on the first Nighter program. Between 1936 and 1955, Barbara appeared in a number of other radio series, including Lux Radio Theater. And Lux, for instance, uh, took five days of rehearsal. They paid you $50, but you actually got $10 a day. <laughs> uh-huh. And... Uh, 
and uh, on Lux it was always uh, uh, motion picture stars. I was one of the few exceptions. Paul Muni wanted me to uh, play his uh, Mrs. Pasteur in the in the in the Louis Pasteur mm-hmm. Lux production, and it was unheard of in those days to take a radio a radio person. And one time it was quite. Strange. Luella Parsons had Hollywood Hotel out mm-hmm. here. I don't know if you mm-hmm. recall it. He asked for me to be his leading lady, and that was dandy. I was real pleased because they they paid twenty five bucks, and uh, and it only took two days of rehearsal, uh, whereas Lux paid fifty, but it took five Good days. Five, huh? And uh, which is back to the reason why we recorded at mm-hmm. night. Mm-hmm. But uh, we rehearsed this uh, this uh, the did the dress rehearsal before the show that day, and I saw this very Fifth Avenue-ish looking advertising man sitting over in a corner who had been watching me and uh, there was no place else to sit down but a seat next to him so I sat there and uh, I said I I, uh, understand they pay $25 for the show he said well you're not getting paid I said why he said because you're getting billing (laughs) (laughs) they were they were saying Francis Letter starring in so and so Barbara Letty is his leading woman. Good night. And I said, never mind the billing. I want the money. Other notable performances were Athena in the syndicated version of Tarzan, one of the three actresses to play Janet Munson Adams on Women in White, Judith Clark on Lonely Woman, as well as a regular performer on Grand Hotel and the Chicago Theater of Air. All right, Sal, now roll the clip. I was... You're what? Coffee brought you. Oh, Oh, uh, Stephen, we must never, never quarrel again. What is nothing to quarrel about now, my sweet? You have come. Each day I think, manana she will see our mistakes. Manana she will come. So now, it is manana. You, you mean you've been expecting me? I knew you would realize how much you love me. You knew... You were waiting for me. You... You're the most conceited person I've ever met in my life. Conceited? Because I knew you would come. I didn't. Dad had to come to Tawana Peck to see his oil wells. So? Then why are you in Cholula? We're just passing through. <laughs> oh, you funny little monkey. You come here because you knew this is where your Esteban lives. That had nothing to do with it, and you're not my Esteban. Oh, but I am. I make myself a present to you. In 1950, production began at Disney on Lady and the Tramp. Barbara Luddy was chosen to play the title role of, you guessed it, Lady. Jock. Oh, Jock. Hello, Jock. Oh, oh, it's you, Lassie. Notice anything different? Uh, uh, You've had a bath. No, not that. You've had your nails clipped? Mm Mm-mm. Guess again. Well... I, I wouldn't have been known. Why, Lassie, a bunny new collar. The unique timbre of Barbara's voice was a perfect match for Lady's sophisticated nature. She gave the character a soft temperament with a degree of curiosity and innocence. Here are the voices of three important characters in Lady and the Tramp. Lady herself, Barbara Luddy. Jock the Little Scotty by Bill Thompson. Old Trusty the Bloodhound by Bill Bauckham. This particular scene is being directed by Ed Penner and Wilford Jackson. What he's trying to say, Lassie, is darling is expecting a wee bairn. Bairn? He means a baby, Miss Lady. Oh, what's a baby? That's good. Uh, Say, Barbara. Yes? That line of yours, what's a baby? Just repeat it several different ways, will you please? All right. Okay, roll it. NW2062, take two. What's a baby? What's a baby? What's a baby? What's a baby? And when I heard they'd taken you to the pound... Oh, don't even mention that horrible place. I was so embarrassed and... And frightened. Oh, no, no, no. Who could ever harm a cute little trick like you? Trick. Trick. That reminds me. Who is Trixie? 
Trixie? And Lulu, and Fifi, and Rosita, Chiquita, wh wh whatever her name is. Chiquita, Chiquita, oh, oh, yes, well, I, I can as explain. As far as I'm concerned, you needn't worry about your old heel. My, my, my heel? I don't need you to shelter and protect me. Yes, but, 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 If but, you grow but, but, careless, don't blame me. And I don't care if the Cossacks do pick you up. Goodbye. And take this with you. And you know how Disney is. It's not just going to be John Ratzenberger who's getting recast in 30 Disney films. Barbara jumped right into Disney's next film, being cast in the role of Meriwether. Mm, I'd like to turn her into a fat old hop -tube. Now, dear, that isn't a very nice thing to say. Besides, we can't. You know our magic doesn't work that way. It can only do good, dear, to bring joy and happiness. Well, that would make me happy. This was another character perfect for her voice. She has a feisty and pessimistic personality, but manages to keep her pragmatic and resourceful. I think we've had enough of this nonsense. I think we ought to think of Rose and what she'll think of this mess. I still think what I thought before. I'm going to get those wands. You know, I think she's right. And on to the next film, 101 Dalmatians, through which she voiced a puppy named Rover. In an interview, she mentions that she also played Nanny. However, it's more likely that she just read for Nanny, but was ultimately replaced by Martha Wentworth, who is credited with the role. Barbara skipped out on The Jungle Book and instead guest starred in a number of television shows, including Hazel, Jericho, Dragonette 1967, Second Hundred Years, and The Shakiest Gun in the West. So trading Jungle Book for all these shows, is, is it worth it? Was it worth it? Let us know in the comments. In 1966, she played Kanga from Winnie the Pooh in all three original shorts. <laughs> Just a moment, dear. Hold still. Goodness, you're bouncy today. That's what rules to their bestest. <laughs> now keep your scarf on. Not so tight, Mama. Is your sweater warm enough? Yes, Mother. And in 1973, she played Mother Rabbit and Little Sister in Robin Hood. Oh, Robin Hood. You've risked so much to keep our hopes alive. Bless you. Bless you. Friar Teth, we've saved this. It's not much, but please take it for the poor. Your last farthing? Oh, little sister. No one can give more than that. Bless you both. We've done quite a bit of work for Disney. Mm-hmm. I did Lady and Lady and the Tramp, and those things I love to do because they're, again, the voice. Yeah. And uh, I'm currently Kanga in Winnie the Pooh. And oh, yeah. All uh -huh. three of those. Rue is my baby. I'm Kanga. And, uh, and I played Meriwether in The Little Fat Blue Fairy in Sleeping Beauty huh? and Nanny Cook in 101 Dalmatians. So I've worked quite a bit for Disney. Oh, yeah. Great. And about every seven years, I, I, I get a, a new set of people who know me because they, about every seven years, they bring Lady and the Tramp out again. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> then kids who weren't born, well, I, I, I started doing it in 53, and I think it took us five years to do it before it was completed. But it, it's come around three or four times. Yeah. And every time, some little kid in the, in the building that never heard of me will say, Hey! I heard somebody who sounded like you. Yeah, a new <laughs> set of fans. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's marvelous, it, though. It's yeah. great. It yeah. really is. Yeah. Barbara's last Disney production was Winnie the Pooh and Tigger 2 in 1974. And her last television appearance was in Kolchak, the Night Stalker, in 1975. Unfortunately, Barbara died of lung cancer in 1979 at the age of 70. Barbara Luddy is an absolute star, appearing on stage, screen, television, and radio. The last one holds most of her time, but Disney holds most of her legacy. Her performances are sweet and sincere, highlighting her unique voice. And her legacy will live on through the many characters she's played. Isn't that right, lady? It sounds wonderful. Hey there, hi, it's me. Hey, it's the guy who narrates the stuff. So, for the last year plus, discography has been great. It's been fantastic. It's been really enjoyable. Uh, but it's also been getting more and more difficult for me to work into my schedule as I progress with uh, my own personal projects. So uh, I'm not going to be the guy who narrates this anymore. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching and supporting this channel. And I know its future is going to be bright.
Good night, everybody. Thank you to these people for your generous support, and a special thank you to John David. You guys are really helping keep this channel afloat. Thank you. Thank you for watching this episode of Dizographies. Don't forget to check out our Patreon and Discord, and click the thumbs up button below if you liked the video. And if you want to be notified when the next episode comes out, subscribe and click the bell. Comment below with characters you would like to see us cover. Further reading and references are linked below. We hope to see you in another Dizography!